Welcome to the Windows and Computer channel and um, in this part two of the um, famous Wi-Fi vulnerabilities are called frag attack. Um, one of the things also that we will talk here is um, how different devices are vulnerable at different levels but also how some of these um, um, flaws are actually used in in, in a way that you actually have to uh, have an action done. So here's the deal with the frag attack, is that not all devices are created equal. So some routers are actually less vulnerable to this than others. That's the first thing. But one thing for sure is that unpatched routers and devices are all vulnerable to a certain level. The attack has to be done within range of your Wi-Fi. So that means if this is to happen, it doesn't happen over the internet. So if you have a vulnerable device, an attacker that wants to steal data or even inject and maybe even control a device uh, needs to be in range of your device. So that already mitigates it also because you would need to have people going through all the Wi-Fi's around you doesn't mean it doesn't exist and doesn't mean you don't have maybe a little tech neighbor that uh, you know for fun will try to uh, um, try this and, and steal the information but the fact is that um, it, you still need to be in range so that the attacker will need to be capable of having a good enough signal to be able to connect or try to connect to your own network information um, in total, it's 12 different flaws that are discovered. A lot of them have started to be mitigated a few months ago, like many months ago, actually. And um, all depends on your manufacturer of your devices. Like I said, the best mitigation is if your router um, manufacturer or if any Wi-Fi device you use has updates, make sure that they are updated to the latest versions of their software or firmware because a lot of manufacturers have started actually releasing fixes for these devices. Um, we did talk about the fact that, you know, mitigation can be done by making sure that, for example, websites that you go through are HTTPS, so if secure websites are encrypted makes it less, um, you know, more difficult to actually steal information there. The uh, use of a VPN is probably also good and making you safer because that in actually makes a encrypted tunnel. And what is interesting out of a, a VPN is that even if you go to websites that are not secure, because there's still a lot of them out there, a VPN will keep all of that secure because it will stay encrypted even on websites that are not HTTPS or not secure. The um, mitigation also goes in different ways. So, for example, like I said, um, your Windows machine has already started to have updates to mitigate this. Uh, Linux kernel, Mac computers, the operating systems have been adjusted and have also been uh, updating all the protocols in order to have uh, the least amount or the, the smallest chance possible of actually having this happen. Um, the biggest danger is probably in the, like I said, the smart home devices because these, you know, there's no big um, unified way of making sure that your devices are up to date and secure. This is the big problem of the smart home today not having a general rule that everything needs to be updated in a certain way and that's it. Uh, each manufacturer is pretty much on their own. And uh, that is kind of interesting because uh, it creates a, a lot of problems over time. Once again, um, I would not go crazy over this, even though some devices are more vulnerable. And there are ways that actually you can be um, spoofed also, there are some of these attacks require you to actually have a, or create an action that will help the attacker. So it could be in trying to forge or 
uh, trying to have you go into a fake login page of the router or a, uh, an, a, a special image could be actually done and, and injected within the, uh, the packets uh, that you would see on your computer and need to do an interaction because that's the thing here. There's need to be an interaction for a lot of these flaws uh, on your part in order to give access. So, you know, if you see something abnormal, um, that could be a sign. And if you don't react, if you don't do anything with it, if you just, you know, it's like shut down your browser, for example, there's no problem there. Um, I'm trying to get more and more information because, um, you know, Wi-Fi is something that we all use and is something that needs to be uh, as secure as possible because uh, in our wireless, wireless connected devices today, um, a lot can happen if things don't uh, stay safe. So more will be posted on this and more updates will be coming throughout the next days and weeks as we, uh, of course, have more information. Like I said, the uh, the number one thing you should do is go and check out updates for your devices, Wi-Fi devices that you have, um, like your routers and your smart home bulbs and switches and power outlets and um, you know anything you might be using um, uh, that is a smart device to uh, try to mitigate this as much as possible. It affects every uh, device that is either a modern router because it affects WA3 and all the way back to WEP, which was the first installment of uh, security for Wi-Fi back in something like 1997. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.